This is a screencast on Nathaniel Hawthorne's uh, The Birthmark. And I asked you while you were reading to, um, to think about what are Elmer's true motives for ridding Georgiana of the birthmark. And so we're going to kind of talk about all of that um, in our screencast today. So here you have a scientist. It's the late 1700s. Um, a lot of emphasis is placed on, um, on science at the time. And you have this pretty intelligent man, Elmer, uh, and he is, um, he is very wise. He experiments a lot. Um, but he's trying to, to achieve fame and fortune um, by discovering something undiscoverable. And so he, in all of his nerdy self ways, he convinces this beautiful woman and to marry him. And she's beautiful. She's perfect. She's sweet. She's kind. She's beautiful inside and out. She's got a gentle personality. Um, she wants to please him. But she has one flaw. Um, at the center of her cheek, there was a singular mark, deeply interwoven, as it were, with the texture and substance of her face. Uh, the mark wore a tint of deeper crimson, which imperfectly defined its shape amid the surrounding rosiness. When she blushed, it gradually became more indistinct and finally vanished amid the triumphant rush of blood that bathed the whole cheek with its brilliant glow. But if any shifting emotion caused her to turn pale, there was the mark again, a crimson stain upon the snow in what Almer sometimes deemed an almost fearful distinctness. Its shape bore not a little similarity to the human hand, though of the smallest pygmy size. Okay, so she's got this small, very small pygmy size, small handprint uh, on her face, birthmark. She's had it since she was um since she was born and she's had it her whole life and um that never had kind of slowed her down or stopped her before she had a lot of admirers before she married almer uh but this stain this um this birthmark he comes to see as a flaw because she's so perfect in all other ways it's hard for him to see this mark, this one thing that's marring the, her perfection in his eyes. And so he asks her if, uh, if she'd ever kind of thought about getting it removed. And he said, uh, and she said, no, I knew, you know, I've never really considered having it taken from my face. And he says, he says, no, dearest Georgiana, you came so nearly perfect from the hand of nature that this slightest possible defect, which we hesitate whether to defer, determine a defect or a beauty, shocks me as being the visible mark of earthly perfection. And this really hurts her feelings because here she was, she is in this marriage and she's 100% committed to it and she kind of worships the ground he walks on and he's just told her that this one thing about her shocks him and and it, and it hurts her feelings on a whole a whole new level to him this is a flaw it's a stain um, and if you remember when we read in 102 uh, we read the um, my last Duchess and uh, we talked about the fact that the Duchess smiled and blushed involuntarily and you know how he saw that as a sign of her guilt well this is kind of the same concept he sees this defect as uh, a flaw and kind of chalks it up to um, sin like it's a sin she was flawed she is, has sinned and nature has given her um, this mark this stain um, and it's deeply interwoven with her countenance, okay? So, he thinks that he can rid her of this mark. He's a scientist. He's a bright guy. He thinks that he can take the mark from her face. And so, he begins um, kind of experimenting uh where to, to, on on different things to try to to move in that in that direction where that he can remove this stain this mark from her face um so obviously uh 
uh, he has a dream that uh, he is has her on the operating table and he's removing this crimson hand from her face and the more he digs the more he realizes that the stain is there so it's so deep it, it's so deep and he continues to dig and dig and dig until he eventually gets to her heart uh, and he realizes in his dream that to remove it would kill her um, yet he's so obsessed with removing the stain that he is not that is not even going to play a role in his in his um, doubt whether or not he was going to do it because he wants to remove it he becomes so obsessed with this um this thing and so he convinces her that that she would die if he left it on she says i know not what may be the cost to both of us to rid me of this fatal birthmark perhaps its removal may cause cureless deformity or it may be the stain goes as deep as life itself. Again, we know there is a possibility on any terms of unclasping the firm gripe of this little hand, which was laid upon me before I came into the world. And he says, Dear Georgiana, I'm convinced of the perfect practicability of its removal. And she says, If there be the remotest possibility of it, let the attempt be made at whatever risk Danger is nothing to me. For life, while this hateful mark makes me the object of your horror and disgust, life is a burden which I would fling down with joy. Either remove this dreadful hand or take my wretched life. You have deep science. All the world bears witness of it. You have achieved great, great wonders. Cannot you remove this little mark which I cover with the tips of two small fingers? That's how tiny it was, y'all. Is this beyond your power for the sake of your own peace and to save your poor wife from madness so each of them are going through the struggle his struggle is that he is he is so hell-bent on removing it and, and in his ability to remove it that he has worried her to the point of I mean she's basically saying take it from my face and if it cannot be taken from my face just let me die just kill me so that you don't have to witness this horrible sin upon my face so, there's a lot of self-deception going on. He has already failed at many other experiments. I mean, he's had some achievements, but he's not achieved at the level that she thinks that he has. And he is not God. He can't play God. Uh, that whole idea that science has its limits, like where do you cross the line into, you know, you think about all the common topics of today, like the hot button topics, like gender, uh, choosing genders of babies and all that kind of stuff, um, cloning and transplants, like human head transplants and all these people that are, that are trying to do these extraordinary things. But in the end of the day, there ha science has its limits. You can't play God. Um, and so, obviously, um, he um, he's completely convinced that he can do this. And um, so, he takes her in to, to, give her, to give her this surgery. And so, he succeeds in removing the imperfection he removes it from her face but in the process just like in his dream uh he kills her um he, it is too deep and he continues to try to dig it out she drinks the uh she drinks a liquid um uh, uh, a poison essentially uh and so she drinks this poison uh, that he tells her will remove her from her, um, remove the stain from her cheek. Uh, and so the crimson hand, which at first had been strongly visible upon the marble paleness of Georgina's cheek, now grew more faintly outlined. She remained not less pale than ever, but the birthmark with every breath that remained, uh, that came and went, 
lost somewhat of its former distinctness. Its presence had been awful. Its departure was more awful still. Watch the stain of rainbow fading out of the sky, and you will know how that mysterious symbol passed away. By heaven, it is well now gone, said Almer to himself. I can scarcely trace it now. Success, success. And now it is like the faintest rose color. The slightest flush of blood across her cheek would overcome it, but she is so pale. And so she is, uh, she wakes up and, and she, she asks him if he'd removed it. And, and she says, you have done it. I, I'm successful. You're perfect. Uh, and then she dies, um, because the poison kills her. So how, what are, what are we looking at here? Is his true motive because he wanted his wife to be perfect and wanted her to be beautiful for her sake or was it more of he was obsessed with playing god and he overstepped his he overstepped his bounds here so just think about that as you are um finishing up with this particular story an interesting story there's a lot of resemblance uh, to me, to my last Duchess um, by Browning, and and how um, he became obsessed with the stain, the blush on her cheek. Uh, so interesting, interesting.